There has to be some common sense. Yes, sir. They have the car stopped in Tampa Ranch, Michael Biden. We still don't know who pulled the trigger. everyone and welcome to police off the cuff real crime stories i'm your host retired nypd sergeant bill cannon retired after 27 years out of manhattan north homicide squad and you know guys since i've been off the job 10 going on 11 years a lot of things have changed in new york city the city we knew is changing a lot uh, in regards to crime and not for the better not for the better i was brought up in the Comstat era of broken windows policing where in a 30-year period, we dropped crime 70, 70% in the seven major crimes. Now it's starting to creep up. And what's causing crime to creep up is, is politics, the ugly, ugly head of politics and people with ambition, people who will not admit what they have done is wrong and it was a mistake. And specifically what I'm referring to is bail reform. But you know the good thing in a democratic society You can hit back. And you know who's hitting back, which is great to see? The police department. Eric Adams is hitting back. This bail reform is destroying this city, destroying this city. But yet, even though he says this, bail reform is destroying the city, it's it's that the the people are not totally paying attention. The uh, let me try. I'm going to try to play something here. um, And I'm going to share this with you guys. Um, talking about how bail reform and the recidivism of criminals and the revolving door system is just totally destroying this city. But yet the people upstate in Albany, the, the, the Hochul's, the Governor Hochul, who's not elected, appointed, the Carl Hasties, the Speaker of the Assembly, the Stuart Cousins, they, they don't know what's going on. The police department didn't send the statistics. These statistics. I, I'm doing a crazy Eddie again. It's not their job to send you statistics. It's your job to know what's going on in your district. And if you say that, you should be unelected because you're ignorant and you're, you're 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 admitting to ignorance. You should know what's going on in your district. And call Heasty, your district is out of control. But yet you don't know what's going on with bail reform and you. You refuse to change it. Hochul, the same thing. Hochul, guess what? You're not going to get elected because you, you got your head in the sand. I'm going to play a little bit of this, share this. We're going to see exactly what's going on. And I think some of these folks have a lot, really a lot to worry about come November. And that in a democratic society, that's how we get back at these folks that aren't doing their job reform is not a new topic that has been proven to be controversial and, and even very uh, infuriating uh, for a lot in law enforcement. So uh, what's the latest from New York? Absolutely. And good morning to you, Adrian. You know, the mayor says so far this year, NYPD officers have surpassed a 30 year high on gun related arrests. But the mayor says many of the violent offenders they're arresting are right back out on the streets within days or in some cases hours. And now the mayor is sending an urgent message for help from state lawmakers. Our criminal justice system is insane. It is dangerous. Did you hear that? The mayor used the word insane. Our criminal justice system is insane. Therefore, the people in Albany must be insane. The woman who is running for governor is insane because they've allowed the criminal justice system to be insane. Oh, I forgot the city council. We know you guys are insane. You pass the diaphragm law and you're just a, you destroy everything policing in this city. But Mayor Adams used the word insane talking about our criminal justice system. Dangerous, it is harmful, and it's destroying the fabric of our city. New York City Mayor Eric Adams says NYPD officers are doing their job, getting guns and violent offenders off the streets. But he says the city's criminal justice system has created a revolving door of no consequences for repeat offenders. NYPD Commissioner Keyshawn Soul standing with the mayor also calling the system broken. After the NYPD has arrested them, 
the criminal justice system fails to hold them. The problem, as they see it, is the state's bail reform law, which has been called soft on crime. Also under the law, judges cannot set bail for crimes like robbery, burglary, and assault. People charged with those crimes are released until they're called for trial. The mayor and commissioner are releasing a list of the city's 10 worst repeat offenders. One person has more than 100 lifetime arrests, 88 of them occurring since 2020. Another person arrested 23 times for burglary in the last two years is out on parole. And one man arrested 25 times since 2020, including nine arrests for burglary, is free to walk city streets. Overall, the NYPD says 10 repeat offenders account for nearly 500 arrests made in the city since the state's new bail reform law took effect in 2020. The mayor now sending an SOS to state legislators to toughen the state's bail laws and give judges more power to keep repeat offenders or recidivists in jail longer. This is about a small number of people that are taking advantage of the existing laws to endanger our city. Now, shootings and homicides are down when compared to the same time last year, but crimes like robbery, burglary, and larceny continue to go up, and many of the people arrested in connection to those crimes are repeat offenders. You know, folks, the, the, the barometer for violent crime in the city uh, was, was always robbery. And uh, when you talk about the seven major crimes, ro- if your robberies were up in a precinct in a specific area, the commanding officer was, was very worried because he may be getting transferred very soon if he didn't get his robberies under control. I just want to mention something about uh, the Manhattan District Attorney, Alvin Bragg, uh, an absolute clown comes into, uh, you, know, you know, with a million dollars from George Soros to get elected. He comes on in with this 10-part, 10 10-step 10 program, and basically it's, it's underlining decarceral policies. It's something at the DA's office they call ATI, and that stands for Alternatives to Incarceration. So therefore, Alvin Bragg came up with this idea where someone sticks a gun in your face and robs you, takes your possessions, but doesn't shoot you. Oh, thank you, Mr. Perpetrator, for not shooting me. Oh, that's not so bad. So we're going to prosecute that now as a misdemeanor, as a pettit lawson. But they must do something first. They must now drop the robbery charges and rearrest as a pettit larceny and do a, what's called the proffer to cut a deal with this defendant, with his attorney there, where he admits to the crime, and so he won't get incarcerated. How about the person, Alvin Bragg, who had the gun stuck in their face? Did they get an alternative to their psychological well-being? Are you going to pay for their psychiatrist and their psychologist? Because they've been, they've been victimized, they've been petrified, they had a gun stuck in their face? No, we're worried about... The mope who stuck a gun in someone's face, and we're worried about putting that guy in jail or in prison. I think our priorities are all out of whack. And Alvin Bragg, pay attention. Ron DeSantis, the governor of Florida, I'm sure you know this. He just dumped his attorney general for doing what you did. All right? So if Hochul has any nerve whatsoever, she's she's watching DeSantis. And she may, out of self-preservation, have to launch you too. So pay attention. And I know all the people in your DA's office, you brought in like-minded thinkers that think just like you. So the whole DA's office has to go. When you go, you got a clean house. You know, that's just the way it is because you cannot, you cannot go on like this. It just, it just is, is so outrageous that you cannot, you cannot run a city like this. But you know something, a, a few incidents very recently have, um, Few incidents very recently have citywide implications, and it, it's caught the attention not just of the criminal justice system, but of the state and national politicians, and even the media, who are fair weather, they're not friends of the police, but 
it's caught the attention. And now they're writing about it and they're talking about it. Senseless violence, this time over cold French fries. I feel like people should just not get upset over little things. Life's too short. A 23-year-old McDonald's worker was shot in the neck after a customer complained about her fries being cold, according to the NYPD. That's when investigators say she called her 20-year-old son to come over and get involved. The employee is in critical condition at the hospital. Police identified the shooter as 20-year-old Michael Morgan, who has been charged with attempted murder and criminal possession of a weapon. Morgan was also charged with criminal possession of a weapon and murder in the 2020 killing of a 28-year-old Brooklyn man, according to the NYPD. This high-profile shooting concerning such a minor dispute comes as New York's Mayor Eric Adams is highlighting repeat offenders. Definition of insanity is to do the same thing repeatedly, but expect different results. Our criminal justice system is insane. And this is not attacking some of the needed reforms that we had. This is about a small number of people that are taking advantage of the existing laws to endanger our city. The NYPD released a list of its, quote, worst of the worst high volume offenders. The top 10 have been arrested a total of 485 times since bail reform in 2020. Some of those offenders are not behind bars. They are allowed out the door, back out onto the streets. Like this takedown video from last week that's gone viral. Martial arts expert Ro Malabanen pinning down a man who was accused of sucker punching people. Guys, just reminding you, uh, this martial arts expert, God bless the guy, caught the perp. If he was a cop, he could be prosecuted for a misdemeanor because he's violating the diaphragm law, which was passed by the morons in the city council. So watch this, city council. You're not the next group called out, and you, you're the next group that needs to lose their jobs. People in the streets. Samuel Frazier was later charged with third-degree assault, a misdemeanor, not a felony. In my mind, I was, like, afraid because, like, this guy may hurt another person. But according to the district attorney, Frazier is back out tonight, released on his own recognizance. The NYPD calling it a, quote, no-consequences landscape. The major seven crimes that the NYPD tracks are up almost 37 percent this year, over the same period last year. Murders and shootings are both slightly down, but they are still up significantly from pre-pandemic levels. New York's Legal Aid Society says that 97% of people released and not held at Rikers don't go on to commit violent felonies upon release. Anytime someone's arrested, that does not mean that they actually did the thing that they were arrested for. Governor Kathy Hochul <laughs> responding today saying bail reform is not the culprit. It's hard to draw. This lady is so clueless. She is so clueless that she, she really, she needs to go too. She really does. She's clueless. She has no idea about crime. She was appointed by Cuomo, who incidentally, his parting gift to everyone was changing the ages of, uh, of uh, liability uh, from 16 to 18 to be charged as an adult with a felony. That was his parting gift. So this lady knows nothing about what she's talking about. Our correlations between what's going on and bail, when you see an escalation of crime all over the country, other cities are in far worse shape. Stephen Romo joins us now live from New York. Stephen, you know, it's quite interesting. You have the mayor of New York City calling what's happening with the justice system in his own city insane. And then you have this man who's allegedly slugging people left and right on Broadway. He gets taken down by a group of New Yorkers but then he's released right away. Yeah, and that was just uh, one week ago, Tom. He is already back out on the streets. Samuel Frazier is. It's one of the reasons that this is happening is that New York reforms require a judge to consider the financial ability of the defendant, not just their perceived dangerous. Uh, an attorney with the Legal Aid Society says that can be different, what people perceive as dangerous to what reality actually is. But with all of these videos and all of these repeat offenders, these reforms are something that is being looked at right now. This week in New York City, unbelievable, right? Unbelievable. And then, and then, you know, the NYPD, because they are also, besides we're in the crime business, they are in the statistics business. They hand a book 
a book of 10 of the worst offenders. This is what the results of bail reform. And then you have the nerve of the governor and Heasty from Albany and Stuart Cousins from Albany. Oh, I, I have no idea about that. Then you should be fired. If you don't know about your own constituency in the Bronx, shame on you. Is the police department supposed to hand you this report every week? No, you should know about it. It's so pathetic that I cannot believe that these people get elected. It's, it's, it's so, you know, it, it's so unbelievable. And you know something? The reason I'm doing this show today is because, guess what? They're getting the attention of Albany. They're getting the attention of Carl Heasty. They're getting the attention of Stuart Cousins. They're getting the attention, attention of Kathy Hochul. They're nervous. They're real nervous. And they're saying, oh, maybe should we do something about it? But they don't want to back up because, because to them, if they do something about bail reform, it's sort of like uh, it, it's a loss. You know, it, 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 they have to admit that they were wrong. They better admit that they were wrong. And guess what? They're going to they're going to have more than uh, egg on their face. They're going to all lose their jobs, which I hope they do. They need to lose their jobs. They really do because these people are arrogant and they're not admitting the obvious. It's like what did Adam say? The definition of insanity is doing the same thing and expecting different results. That are the that's the politicians in this city. They're 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 insane. They're doing the same thing and they're expecting different results. And guess what? They're not going to get different results. In a moment, you'll hear from Mayor Adams and then our chief of crime control strategies, Mike LaPetri, is going to describe in detail the challenges we are facing in New York City every day. This is about recidivists who cause New Yorkers to suffer needlessly. Every day, as hardworking New Yorkers start their day or night of work or school or to simply enjoy what this city has to offer, Recidivist criminals are planning or taking the opportunity to commit their next larceny, robbery, burglary, or other crime. Their efforts are increasingly aided by the fact that after the NYPD has arrested them, the criminal justice system fails to hold them appropriately accountable for their actions. These offenders face very few, if any, repercussions, despite committing crime after crime and the number of victims continues to go up. Your NYPD officers speak to these victims. We support them and proudly go to work for them with every resource we have. But for too many of these victims, justice is elusive. Justice and fairness go hand in hand. Public service has to work together on behalf of all of the people we serve. We are seeing tragedies every day on the streets of this city we love and serve. People are suffering and more and more are unnecessarily becoming victims. Victims of repeat offenders who have shown that their criminal behavior is given no consequences. They see that because they've been through the system before, sometimes dozens and some even more than a hundred times and they are allowed out the door, back out onto the streets. New York remains the only state that prevents judges from considering the threat to public safety when making custody determinations. That doesn't serve the next innocent victim, it doesn't serve our officers, and it doesn't serve quality of life. We can and must do better. We always say that public safety is a shared responsibility it cannot just be the NYPD. We know how to do this. We are continuing to address the needs of New Yorkers. The NYPD is out there helping people, protecting the public in their homes, in the streets, and on the transit system. We need to do this job together with the right tools and with a focus on our victims. Mayor Adams. Thank you, Commissioner, and uh, thank you to the team of New York City police officers uh, who are doing the right things for our city. Uh, it is crucial that the police department and our administration, we have made a clear decision that we are going to give the information to the public. 
and let the public make the decision of the four components of the criminal justice process. Police, judges, prosecutors, lawmakers. They have to operate in unison. On pe public safety and justice, uh, this administration's top priority is something that I decided to run on. And that is something that I am committed to do as the mayor. They are the alpha and omega of our North Star. It moves us in a direction. And the four components of public safety must do their job to reach that North Star. Is the police department doing its job? Let me change that question mark into an exclamation point. Over arrests have increased by 24% for a total of 109,000 arrests by August 1st of this year as compared to 87,794. You know, folks, I just, I'm not going to play the whole thing. He starts talking about statistics, uh, arrest statistics. Uh, he brings the chief from crime control strategies up on the stage. And he talked, the bottom line is the cops are doing a fantastic job. Arrests are up like 20%. How do you get these cops to do their job when they're being attacked at every point, but they're still doing their job. Apparently they've come up with more guns this year than last year. How is that amazing? It's amazing. So they're still putting themselves out there for the citizens of this city, yet a thankless job, they're getting pelted with bottles at every step of the way they're being abused. The video cameras stuck in their face I want to applaud the rank and file of the NYPD. You guys are doing a fantastic job. And yet, once you get your arrestees to the DA's office, they're not doing their job. They're not prosecuting. Bail reform is allowing some of the worst perps uh, to get out, you know, to be released. And we've seen that with the, uh, we've all watched, you know, ad nauseum, the, 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 um, the attack on the transit officer and how much crime is up in transit. And the guy who attacked the officer in transit, he was out on a, on a gun collar. He had, he had an open gun collar. And just, just totally outrageous. And, you know, I'm just going gonna, gonna to show that assault again because, to me, this is anarchy. This is the results of lax criminal justice system. And as Mayor Adams said, our criminal justice system is insane. Look at the crime stats, citywide 2% in the subway, up 55%, outrageous. At the biggest transit system in the country. And attacks against cops on subways are up by a huge amount. As we saw this weekend, two cops punched several times, assaulted by a teenager who was fair hopping. I was news reporter NJ Burkett live at the scene on the Upper East Side. NJ. Right, Bill, this incident happened on the Lexington Avenue line at the 125th Street subway station. Officers say they spotted the teen jumping a turnstile, confronted him about it, and then apparently asked him to leave the subway station. They say he refused to do that, and what happened next was captured on cell, on cell phone video. Officers say the teen turned on them in a rage, and for several minutes, it was pandemonium in the 125th Street station. He can be seen throwing punches and landing punches as the officers struggle to arrest him. He will eventually be subdued and taken into custody and then released within 24 hours without posting bail. MTA Chairman Jano Lieber. I don't understand how the law would permit that guy to be released when he has two priors. He's already out on the street for to have him immediately released for that attack on a police officer. I don't get it. I know our riders don't get it. Police officials say the officers were attacked after they spotted the teen jumping the turnstile with his girlfriend, that he lashed out at them after they told the couple to leave the subway station. One of two attacks on NYPD transit officers this past weekend. NYPD Transit Chief Jason Wilcox told MTA board members that assaults on his officers have skyrocketed this year. In many cases, while officers were attempting to enforce so-called quality of life infractions. We have seen over a 55% increase in assaults on police officers this year. The majority of these assaults on police officers began as the officers were engaging persons 
who had committed fair evasion and or other quality of life violations on the trains and stations. In the Harlem incident, police say the same teen had two recent prior arrests, including one case where he was arrested with several others in possession of a loaded 40 caliber gun and a crossbow. The criminals underground know they can get in a brawl, choke a cop, and be back out in hours, said PBA President Patrick Lynch. Cops are putting ourselves on the line to make the subway safer, but we are feeling abandoned by a justice system that won't back us up, end quote. Matthew Rue shot the video. I just want to make sure, you know, there was a witness for anything that happened that shouldn't have happened and anything that could have happened that didn't happen. The officers were later. I don't know what that guy meant. He made absolutely no sense, whatever. Why did they even interview that guy? Just, he made no sense. Treated for cuts and bruises and released. Police sources tell me that the entire incident was captured on the officer's body cams and that, in fact, those body cam videos show the officers trying to de escalate the situation before the teen started throwing punches. I just want to make a little comment about the officer. Um, officers getting attacked in the subway by those uh, two perps, the female perp and the male perp. Do you know that after this was over that uh, Alvin Bragg prosecuted that perp, the male perp, as a juvenile, sent him to family court, even though he had an open gun case? Is that outrageous? You know, ATI, alternatives to incarceration. No, that little mope deserves a jail cell. He needs a jail cell. He doesn't deserve an alternative to incarceration. He punched a cop in the face numerous times while out with another an, a gun case, an open gun case. Alvin Bragg, you need to go. You need to go. I, I, and uh, Hochul, you should be listening. This guy needs to go. It's pathetic. It, it's just unbelievable. And, and I don't think that really Hochul fully understands what's going on. I just think she's sort of like walking around like, ah, you know, uh, you know, because she was appointed. She was not elected. She was appointed by Andrew Cuomo, who left the uh, governorship in, in, in disgrace. So it's like she gave a, a, a press conference uh, yesterday in reg about guns. She knows about um, as much about guns as I know about water polo, you know, and, and just just. <laughs> It's amazing. It's just amazing. And, and here's a little bit of a press conference yesterday about guns. Let's see what she talks about. We never said that the cause of crime in the state is because of bail reform. That is too simplistic. That is a political slogan. That's all it is. It it's ignoring the complexity of what we're dealing with and the fact that we've seen this surge all across America after this pandemic because the human condition, something happened. They can study this years to come. Something happened and we went to a dark place and more crimes were committed, but we're turning the corner because I'm watching the data. We're instituting strategies. And so how long I need to study this? I can't do anything legislature until January, so that's going to be the outer limit there. But also, I do this every single day. I work with law enforcement every single day. I work with our mayors every single day. So I'm not waiting for anything. Totally clueless. She's just a totally clueless person. And you know something? Let's just hope she doesn't get uh, she doesn't get elected. I can't say re-elected because she was never elected in the first place. Um, Folks, this is Police Off the Cuff, Real Crime Stories. I'm your host, Bill Cannon, retired NYPD homicide sergeant. If you like this podcast, especially a lot of you members of the service, you coppers that don't know how to get on YouTube, go to our YouTube, hit that subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell. It is free, absolutely free to subscribe to Police Off the Cuff. We're at almost 29,000 subscribers. We've been hovering at that level for a while. I want to hit that 29,000 plateau. So you folks, uh, especially you cops, I support support you 24-7. My partner, Phil Grimaldi, supports you. Mark DeMeo and uh, his partner, Mayo and Meso, their show, they support you guys. Try to give us a little support, guys. Also, if you want to support us financially, we have a Patreon with three different levels. And if you want to join our, um, 
our family, our YouTube family. We have five different levels. That costs a little bit of money, not a lot of money, but you guys can save some of your uh, coffee money and contribute the police off the cuff. I just, you know, I'm very passionate about this stuff because uh, my almost 27 years on the police department, I was always a crime fighter, whether it was anti-crime cop, anti-crime sergeant, citywide anti-crime, RIP sergeant, squad sergeant, and then eventually Manhattan North Homicide Squad. I was always in the game and I was always out on the street and I know what it takes to be a street cop and I know how much the cops need to be backed up by, uh, by the citizenry and by the upper echelon of the NYPD. That's why I think it's so great that Adams, he's talking out and don't forget, Ockel's a Democrat, Adams is a Democrat. He's speaking out against her and, uh, you know, she claims to know a lot about crime. I don't think she knows anything about crime, but he's speaking out against her, which is a great sign. So he's saying, hey, doing the same thing and expecting different results, as we all know that expression, that term, is insanity. And so is the criminal justice system as we see it right now. Alvin Bragg with his ATI program, Alternatives to Incarceration. Just who, who agreed to that? Did any voters agree to that? Or is that between him and George Soros? It's a disgrace. He needs to be removed because that, and all the clowns he brought with him need to be removed too because they obviously agree with him, you know? So that whole ATI program, no one agreed to that. So what are you doing? And then you know what I love when they say, this will make us safer. Oh, yes. Releasing a guy with, that just, that had a gun that just, that just assaulted a cop on the street that will make us safer. Release him. That, oh my God, brilliant, Alvin Bragg. Yeah, that, that'll make us safer. How do you even say that with a straight face? It, it's just outrageous. You know, I, I play this all the time because this is the epitome of, of stupidity in regards to the city council and how they hampered our police officers in regards to um, the diaphragm law. And these are two cops from the 2-5 that are, are lucky, very lucky, that they're still alive. However, they did a fantastic job. And the PBA uh, Police Benevolent Association uses this video to show the public and the politicians how dangerous uh, the diaphragm law is. I'm going to play this tape because it says so much. You know, now, guys, watching this tape, he knows, the perp knows that he has a gun on him. The officers don't know that, but they know he's trying to get away. But yet they're trying to comply with this ridiculous diaphragm law. And also they're also fully aware that their every move is being videotaped, both on their body-worn video and pretty much someone outside is videotaping this as the actions of police officers are videotaped all the time. There you go. You see that? There you go. You see the barrel of the gun? So he's trying to get away because he's got a gun on him. Having a gun on you, you, you know, used to get you three years. Now it gets you released the same night and uh, considered for ATI or juvenile family court. But that's a loaded firearm. I'm pretty sure it's loaded. And that the officers from the 2-5 risked their lives to take off this perp. 
but yet the city council still maintains this diaphragm law is the law of the land. So again, I mean, I think that is uh, illustrates how dangerous the job is of the officers. And here they removed this gun off this perp uh, without uh, without any repercussions. They didn't get hurt. The perp didn't get hurt. But you know, something is that the goal? No, the goal is that they go home. You know, the goal is that the the officers go home. We're not we're not that much concerned with the perp going home. But you know, especially when he has a gun and he wants to, he wants to hurt the, uh, he, he wants to hurt the officers. You know, I can't help but think what I'm going to show you next. And this happened on Sunday, after the Dominican Day Parade in the confines of the 4-4 precinct, where a disorderly crowd uh, attacked our officers. And I can't help but think potentially that this this um, was the catalyst that got these. Um, got the politicians to pay attention. So I want to play a little bit of this. And again, I said this yesterday, I've played this numerous times. I salute the officers in this case because they went above and beyond and they were in a very dangerous situation. <laughs> around 7.30 Sunday night at East 168th Street and Sheridan Avenue in the Bronx. The NYPD says officers were responding to a large group gathered there drinking, playing loud music, blocking the sidewalk, and being disorderly. From this video, seconds later, it appears one officer comes back and throws another man to the ground and tensions escalate. The man in the yellow is seen Lying. punching a cop I and then seven. Last battles are thrown at officers. Oh, video from sure another vantage point shows number. the person in yellow running down. away. There are more cops here. They were doing their job. I think uh, some people you don't live in this area. It's pretty dangerous. So usually people just stay inside. Police officers approached one individual and tried to flee. Turns out he had a loaded firearm on him. And that's when officers tried to disperse the crowd. To think that people would think it's acceptable to throw anything at a police officer. I want your badge number. Badge number. I think I have I have two um I have I have two videos playing at once. I apologize. Uh I got to figure out which one it is now. Uh, oh, there, I, I found it. I found it. Oh, no, I didn't find it. It's still playing, unfortunately. Uh, so you, you see that uh, what the officers are up against on the street, and it's, it's just totally incredible. And the job that they do, being... Uh, having to put up with all of this stuff, they're doing a fantastic job. I mean, I, I just can't imagine going to work every day. And then, you know, in the instance of the 4-4 precinct officers, uh, having bottles thrown at you and like expecting to do that as part of your job as a police officer. Yeah, I'm going to work today. I may have some bottles thrown at me and, you know, and, uh, and I won't get, uh, you know, we won't get backed up. We, uh, they won't back us up. Uh, they won't back us up and, and say, uh, okay, we're going to go out there and arrest all those people and we're going to make sure they stay in jail for at least a couple of days. No, uh, they'll get to the DA's office and they'll release them that very night, no matter what their prior criminal history is, no matter if they have open cases. Guys, Joe Murray, attorney at law, he's a great friend of this show. He's a retired member of the service. He's a fantastic defense attorney especially in police matters, you police officers that need an attorney, you want to go up against the department some, for some outrageous things that the department does, CCRB, IAB. Joe Murray knows the job inside and out, and he's also an outstanding defense attorney. You can call Joe on his cell at 
514-385-5. His email is joe at jmurray-law.com. He's got a website, jmurray-law.com. Uh, he's a hell of an attorney, friend of police off the cuff, and we highly recommend him for all your legal needs. And he's a big, intimidating guy who was once a boxer on the PBA boxing team. So don't, don't be late with your fees, all right? He don't play. <laughs> that's, that's Joe Murray, attorney at law. So um, Joe Murray is actually in the chat right now. He's always watching the show. Uh, Peter Pranz, O'Hallam Raiders, bricks, cinder blocks, roof clearing, duty, etc. Uh, Tony Monty, does anyone know why George Soros wants this sort of lawlessness in America? I just don't get it. Well, he's done this, and I, I forget the number of cities, but it's the 20 or 30 different cities he's had the DA. He's contributed a great deal of money uh, to get the DA who he wants to get elected, elected. For example, he gave $3 million to get George Gascon elected from L.A., who was another disaster, total disaster of a district attorney. Um, Hard to handle. Good job, boys in blue. I endorse stuff at work, but nothing close to cops. I don't know how they don't just quit. Well, many of them have. It's been, it's very difficult uh, to keep cops these days because they have, uh, they have other, um, other options. They have other options. They can go to other police departments. You know, uh, Florida was giving a $5,000 bonus uh, for officers from other jurisdictions to come on their police department. So uh, I see someone just gave me a $10 super chat. See if you can f find out. Don't tell me that's duty run. Duty runs out. Duty run. Thank you. Uh, duty run from uh, his own podcast, Real Crime with Duty Run. Thank you for the $10 super chat. Supreme Commander, I am present for duty. Well, welcome, Duty Run. You do a great service. You have a great podcast. Thank you for your support. B. Abernathy, many have moved to Florida. Yeah, many NYPD guys have left the job and moved to Florida and taken the job with the Florida PD. Richard Resendez, what's up, Bill? How are you? Kelly Walk, right on. Uh, great to see all you guys in the chat. Robert Clark and drugs and alcohol to a domestic shake in my head. God bless you guys. Uh, one of the things and one of the reasons I'm doing multiple uh, shows on this topic is because, believe it or not, it's getting attention. I, I don't know how many people from the NYPD watch this show, especially in the upper echelon. And I hope you are, because I believe I tell it like it is. And I'm, I'm not afraid to call out people. You know, it may be politically uh, untenable to call out Alvin Bragg uh, for the ATI policies, uh, alternatives to incarceration. I mean, that is, if, if you had to define what the Manhattan DA's office is, that's what it is. It's alternative to incarceration. So not only is bail reform part of their agenda, but they don't want to put anyone in jail or in prison. Decarceral policies. Do you know anything about the criminal justice system? If there's no teeth in the law, then offenders are just going to keep offending. If no one gets punished, if there's no sanctions, you know, if there's no uh, deterrence, I, deterrence, I say it like a New Yorker, the deterrence, you know, easy or there. And there's something called general deterrence and specific deterrence. And the difference is, well, say specific de deterrence. Let's use that example of an armed robber who goes into a store, sticks a gun into someone's face and demands money, doesn't shoot anybody, comes out with the money and takes off, gets caught. He goes to court and they see he's a bad guy. So he gets 12 and a half to 25, which I don't even know if that's possible anymore. During my time on the job, it was very possible. So he gets 12 and a half to 25. That's specific deterrence. Now the person that may be thinking about doing an armed robbery, he sees that this guy got 12 and a half to 25. That will deter him from doing a stick-up. So that's called general deterrence. 
So all of these things are very important. And if you don't have any, as I said, teeth in the law, that's why we, we consider pettit larceny and that's stealing property less than $1,000. We consider that not a serious crime. However, if you own a store and pettit larcenists can put you out of business, there was a woman, we had a video of her yesterday. She did over 100, was arrested over 100 times uh, for pettit larceny. If you own a store, that's bad news. And you can't survive if these pettit larcenists are, are just robbing you blind. And I use the word robbing, stealing you blind. You just cannot survive. So, But the district attorney's office, they don't care about that. They care about alternatives to incarceration. Or arrest made during the same period in 2021. Arrests for seven major felonies are up by approximately 29%. Firearm arrests are at a 27-year high. NYPD has taken over 4,300 illegal guns off our streets by the end of July. So you heard that the NYPD has taken over 4,300 guns off the street uh, this so far this year. Pretty impressive. And just realize that stop, question, and frisk is not the stop, question, and frisk as we know it. So the officers are putting themselves at great risk to remove these guns from the street. July. And the numbers of murders and shootings are down for the year. What's not working are the other three pieces. They say the difference, definition of insanity is to do the same thing repeatedly, but expect different results. Our criminal justice system is insane. It so guys, I think one of the reasons I play this is I think it's so great that the police department's hitting back. You know, they sometimes the police department takes it on the chin and they're afraid to go up against uh, the powers that be. But in this instance, uh, they have. And they're talking about, you know, bail reform and, and uh, recidivism. And that, uh, you know, there needs to be changed. The diaphragm law. Do you, I, I know I've mentioned this on prior shows, but Nassau County uh, Police Commissioner Patrick, Patrick Ryder he will not allow his officers to cross the New York City line to make an arrest because of the diaphragm law. He wants to protect his officers. So he does not want them to cross over into New York City because he's afraid his officers could get in trouble with this insane law called the diaphragm law. That's a stand-up guy, a police commissioner protecting his guys. Don't cross over. We'll get the perpetrator another day or we'll have the NYPD detectives grab him for us because we're not going to uh, put our guys in harm's way with this insane diaphragm law. Insane, you know? And if you talk to people on the city council, the way I had uh, Michael Riley on, it was from Staten Island, he was on a couple of weeks ago, and, and they don't get it. They don't get it, these people. They just, they don't have any idea what's wrong. Okay, they, they should bring them all to the police academy and see if they can cuff someone that doesn't want to be cuffed uh, using um, the techniques that you would have to use with the diaphragm law. And, uh, you know, maybe that's one way they could understand it. But as I said before, the arrogance of these people, when they didn't, before they passed this law, they didn't ask anyone in the criminal justice system, whether in academia, whether on the police department, is it feasible for an officer to cuff someone without putting his knee into the person's back. Is that feasible? Could we do that? They never asked because they're all geniuses and they're all politicians. And I use that word with the utmost disdain. They're all politicians and they just go and pass this law. That's a disaster. Change bail laws today. His office released new numbers pointing to a crime wave by a small group of repeat offenders. But as CBS 2's Ali Bauman reports, bail reform advocates claim the mayor's proposal would endanger more people. 
At a press conference Wednesday, Mayor Adams joined the NYPD in detailing rap sheets for who they deem the 10 worst criminals in New York City. Men with 485 arrests between them since bail reform was enacted in January 2020. These offenders face very few, if any, repercussions despite committing crime after crime. The mayor says he wants judges to be able to consider dangerousness when deciding whether or not to set pretrial bail. Our criminal justice system is insane. It is dangerous, it is harmful, and it's destroying the fabric of our city. When would you ever see one Democrat speak out against another Democrat? That's why I think this is great, because, and then she's going to go up to the microphone and be like, ah, what's the matter? You know, like, no clue, just no clue about it. Oh, we're not going to revisit it till January. Till I get elected. Well, maybe you won't get elected. Governor Hochul says under the current law, judges are able to set bail for violent repeat offenders. What we gave judges was the ability to consider severity of the offense. Is this a repeat offense? Is it a is there a, a history involved here? Her belief that the judges have the tools they need. Yes, they have tools that they need. They're not using them. Ariel Reed, an attorney for the Legal Aid Society, believes allowing judges to set bail based on dangerousness would lend itself to bias. The ideas about who is dangerous and who is not, those, all of those things have led to the um, decimation of communities of color. Bail reform advocates argue the mayor's proposal would send more innocent people to Rikers Island. I was in there for a crime that I never committed and sat there on a $100,000 bail for over three years. Yeah, one thing you learn about criminals is they're all innocent. Every single criminal is innocent. But let me say, you know what? Not guilty. Go home. The bail laws are working, Mr. Mayor. Please don't mess with things that are saving lives. The governor suggested judges take... You know, I love that whole thing that the bail reform laws are saving lives. How? How are they saying, and how, how can you say that? You have no proof of that because it's not true. You have statistics of that? These people just make stuff up and no one questions them. It's saving lives. Just like Bragg says, ATI, alternatives to incarceration, will make us safer. Well, it's already been proved, Alvin Bragg, that it's making it more dangerous in New York City. Subway crimes up 57%. Of you. Do you not take the subway? Outrageous. Oh, you're pointing at the gun crime is down, right? You have nothing to do with that. Nothing, zero. So like, it's like, it'll make us safer. Meanwhile, the seven major crimes are up almost 30%. So what are you talking about? It's just, it's just totally, totally incredible. I'm sorry, I, I clicked this off the screen. I'm going to have to put it back on there and uh, we'll replay it continuing education program so they can stay up to date with bail changes enacted by the legislature. A spokesman for the state courts told me the governor is more than welcome to come and speak to criminal court judges about the law. In the newsroom, Ali Bauman, CBS2 News. You know, folks, one other thing I'd, I'd like to mention, and um, I think it's all part of this, and it's very, very important, and that is the homeless problem that we have on the street. And are homeless people criminals? Uh, no, I'm not saying they're criminals, but many homeless people are mentally ill or they're alcohol addicted or drug addicted, and they don't belong living out on the street. They are dangerous many times. And one of the reasons they are dangerous is because they're not taking their medications. They're not supervised. They need to be supervised in order to take their medications. And you see, um, you, you see in other cities, for example, like uh, L.A., like um, San Francisco, people are just living on the streets with impunity. And it's like a third world country. And how about the people? How about the people that pay taxes? How about the people that live there? Don't they have any rights? You see all these advocacy groups say, oh, it's against their right. How about the people that go about their life every day and go to work and are paying ridiculous taxes? You know, we just mentioned the other day that uh, New York City is just putting out uh, the congestion pricing. Congestion pricing. 
another assault on the taxpayer. So some suburban person that owns one of those evil carbon burning vehicles will now have to pay 15 or $20 if they go below 60th Street with their evil uh, fossil fuel burning steel vehicle, you know? So, and what is that designed to do? Let's punish this person for driving this car into the city and let's hit them with another tax. You know why? Because only 60% of the ridership is riding the subways uh, post pandemic. So how are we gonna make up that 40%? Oh, I got a great idea. Let's institute congestion pricing. Excellent. Open cash register for the city. And now we can let all the, all the would-be criminals jump the turnstile and uh, we don't have to worry about it. And the other thing is, it's not bad enough now they have congestion pricing, 24-7 speed cameras all over the city. So if you go over 35 miles an hour, you're going to get hit with a $50 bill, $50 to $100, depending on how fast you're going. And they're just going to send it to your house. Very friendly, very friendly type of fine. Pay us 50 bucks. Another way that the, uh, the suburban person that drives one of those evil carbon burning vehicles is going to get hit to pay for the folks jumping the turnstile. Am I cynical about this? I'm actually 100% correct. And the city will act like, oh, this is a safety net. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's an open cash register. And initially, it was supposed to only be these speed cameras were only supposed to be by schools. And it was supposed to make it safer near schools. Guess where? It's all over now and 24 7. 24 7. They're going to slam the taxpayer. It's, it's just. It's just crazy. I just think it's, it's, it's nuts. And, you know, I think that's a lot why people are leaving this city because they're getting slammed. The good people, uh, the good people are just getting slammed. They're getting slammed with, uh, with higher taxes. They're getting slammed with crime. They're getting slammed at every, every juncture with, 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 guess what? Guess what we're doing today? You know, they're getting slammed with their great police force being whittled down because they don't back them up. Uh, they're getting slammed with criminals throwing bottles at police officers and then getting arrested. The criminals get arrested and the district attorney's office doesn't prosecute them. Are you paying for the services? There's one of the officers from the 4-4 that had to street combat techniques they need to learn, right? And then the academy teaches them verbal judo and de-escalation of force. They don't need de-escalation of force. They need escalation of force when they deal with this. The other thing, see that little mope in the yellow shirt with his camera? That's another thing. They need a law that civilians, no matter who they are, can't come within an X amount of feet of an officer for the purpose of videotaping and getting in the officer's face. If you watch that, um, that video of the, the, the crowd attacking these officers, they are, um, they're like two, three feet away from the officers. It, it's like, it's just outrageous. I just, I cannot believe it. They're like three or four feet away from the cops and the cops have to deal with that. There was just a jurisdiction that made it, you could only come within eight feet of the police officers with your camera. Just, just, just outrageous, you know. Uh, Moonlight View, police off the cuff bill keeps it pertinent, listening and learning. Thank you, Moonlight View. And thank you for being a member of our YouTube family. Adrian Tardy Gooden, my brother's retired from corrections at Rikers. They throw their feces at guards. You know, is that that would only happen to me once? And I would, I would go to the um, my commanding officer and resign. You, they can't pay you enough for something like that to happen. Uh, Jamie Pimentel, how are, we, are you, buddy? Hard to handle. Cops should only work twenty hours a week and get paid for fifty. It's what they need since they go through so much. I don't think that'll ever happen. 
right in front of the police station, but the places they were kept was in Humane. I filled in a state hospital around here during the blizzard of 78 and never saw anything like it in the smells. Um, Abby started with PC. Phil Leo, the borders have to be sealed. Millions are streaming into and being bust into major cities by the current administration and the infrastructure, hospitals, mass transit, social services, et cetera, can't afford it. Maui Smith, great to see you, Maui. Uh, great to see all you guys. Uh, and thank you for joining me. I didn't, today I didn't do a uh, coffee with Canon. Instead, I opted to do um, a serious topic, you know. Uh, it's important that they keep the heat up, and especially on the governor and this Manhattan DA, Alvin Bragg, and the policies that they're trying to institute. I don't know if that's what they got elected to do. I think a district attorney is elected to prosecute, not to decide who is guilty and who should be uh, have his crime downgraded. How would you like to be the victim of an armed robbery where someone sticks a gun in your face, takes your property, and then you find out the district attorney downgrades it to a pennant larceny? I'll tell you what. I would be very, very pissed that I would go to the highest level to stop that from happening. Outrageous. And they, they, they give you the excuse alternate to incarceration. And they say, it will make us safer. Which, where did they get that from? You know, There's certain things that we as, as taxpayers, we as civilians, we as people that have half a brain, when they tell you alternatives to incarceration will make us safer, you have to tell them, no, it will not. You're lying. That's a lie. The other thing is, which is one of my really big pet peeves, are these violence interrupters. I just, I just cannot believe that they're getting away with that. Criminals that get out of prison that are former gangbangers, former shooters, they pay them a salary to try to get other gangbangers to try to get them to stop using violence. And there's no proof that this works whatsoever. Yet some of these guys are getting paid $85,000 a year. It's a total money grab. How do, are they using our taxpayer money to do this? And what are the qualifications of these Rikers Island and, and, and Sing Sing and Coxsackie and Elmira prison graduates? What are their qualifications? Oh, oh, they have none other than the fact that they've shot someone before. How are they selling this horseshit to the tax base? How? It's unbelievable. You know, something, you say something enough times and people start to believe it. And I just think it's, uh... thank you, Bill. Hard to handle. I see the police differently now. They deserve more care and support. I won't be so quick to judge them in the future. Um, let's see. Uh, crazy, Abby, so long, Mona, Lisa, like when the AWB made society safer. Anyone remember that? No, me neither. So, guys, I actually went over an hour. I didn't think I would. I usually don't go that long. Uh, Michelina Serino, you're so funny, Bill. She is clueless for sure. Uh, I hope that Adams keeps the pressure on Hochul and Hochul keeps the pressure on Bragg and actually feels so much pressure on herself that she removes Bragg because that's the only way he's going to get removed is by the governor, you know. And then maybe if she doesn't do that, she'll get removed. And the new governor will remove him. But just, we don't, we shouldn't have to put up with this nonsense. No one elected him to do this. So one billionaire gives him a million dollars. This is what you get. So you're represented by a billionaire that wants the DA to do what he likes, right? So guys, again, uh, thank you so much for tuning in today. It's a tough world we live in, but I wanted to keep the focus and the attention on this bail reform and all of this stuff, I think it's important. Guys, God bless. Have a great day. This is Bill Cannon from Police Off the Cuff, Real Crime Stories. Have a great day. One episode, just ain't enough.